guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be exploring Ginza and the areas around it. These are some places that I would personally take my friends and family when they come to visit Tokyo for the first time. Without further ado, let's get started. As always, all the places that we're going to visit today will be linked in the description box down below. So because Ginza is a shopping district, a lot of the stores here and cafes, they open kind of late. So there's not much to do if you ever come here by like 9 a.m. The place I want to take you to is called Tendon Itsuki and it's one of the best tempura places that I've found recently and I know it's also popular with a lot of tourists but I think it's popular because it has really good value it's not too expensive and the amount of food that you get is crazy <laughs> ordered a regular tandon set. It is 1,300 something yen. So not bad. I'm excited. walk around and I think I'm gonna take you guys to some of my favorite places that I always check out here like the loft here is like five floors loft has no business being that many floors but we're gonna go I actually prefer loft to Tokyo hands you can get a lot of souvenirs on the first floor but if you're looking for something specific you can explore the rest of the building I had a friend who I accompanied to this loft like a few days ago and he just had the time of his life looking through everything on the first floor and he was able to get everything for his friends and family there. But yeah, the best part is really just exploring the different levels, looking through all the things like bags, they have stationery, they have skincare, home goods, like they literally have everything. I just found these super cute albums that are like Pantone themed. And of course, if you want to decorate it, you can just get the stickers here. This is so cool. It's like my first time seeing it. I always discover something new every time I go to Loft. It just says, cheese, please. And it's a desk calendar. That's so crazy. <laughs> literally spent like an hour inside loft just looking at things like there's just so much to get there something my friends really want to see when they come to tokyo is the muji hotel and basically the multi-story muji store here in ginza and i came here with the same friend the other day and we just had a blast like going through everything they have like a supermarket on the first floor with really expensive produce because I guess it's like Muji produce or whatever. It has a cafe and bakery in it. It's just wild to me, so let's go inside. For me, I really love Muji skincare. It's so affordable and you get so much product for the amount that you pay. A while ago, the entire like face care, skincare section was totally full. Um, now let's walk toward I think they have like a Muji book section and a coffee area, so let's go.
that I really like about Ginza is that during the weekends, I think Sunday and national holidays, like today, they close the main street for pedestrians and it's just a really nice picture spot. Today is especially nice, the sun is really out, no cloud in the sky. So next, let's go to the Okono building, which is a place I really wanted to go after I saw it online. It's like a really old, well-preserved building here in Ginza. It used to be an apartment complex that they made during the Showa era, but now it's just, they've converted a lot of it into art galleries and antique shops. There's an elevator, but I'm scared to use it. I don't want to get trapped. So let's just walk to the third floor. Oof. Whoa. It's pretty unique. It's really old looking. Wow. It's like the building itself is a museum. Ooh, cool. I realize this building is like over 90 years old because it was made in 1932. This is crazy, you have to come here. I am waiting for the gallery to open. Um, should have opened like two minutes ago, but not no signs of it opening yet. So let's go to the other galleries here. <laughs> That was the coolest experience I've ever had inside such a historic building. This building has literally seen the best and worst times of Japan, especially Tokyo. Like, to see so much history preserved so well in this building, it just gives me chills. And I love that they repurposed a lot of it for art galleries and really specialized shops. I can really recommend it to you guys if you're into history or architecture. It's really like stepping back in time. It's really, really beautiful. So now that we've had a little taste of history, we're gonna go back into the real world and we're gonna go look at Itoya, which is a stationary shop, a multi-level stationary shop for serious stationary enthusiasts. I'm not one of those people, but just in case you guys are, let's go and check it out together. just finished 
at Itoya and oh my god I feel like it's a more curated loft like I think it's also really bad especially if you're like me and you pick up hobbies at the drop of a hat and want to like invest in like some really good things for your hobbies yeah I'm really glad that I don't go there often because it would have been very dangerous and it's not cheap like I would say the things inside Itoya are pretty high quality you do feel I feel like most of the time in Japan you do get what you pay for but if you're very serious and you only like stationery you only like wrapping paper and you need like 50 different kinds of wrapping paper then Itoya is your best bet now I also want to go to GU because I haven't been to that GU in a really long time I really like GU compared to Uniqlo I feel like the pieces are a little bit younger it's a little bit cheaper as well the only thing though is that quality wise it might not be at the same level that you would expect from something of something from Uniqlo so just keep that in mind and you should be fine now let's go to the Uniqlo right next door I won't film too much because I'm pretty sure you guys know what a Uniqlo is it's just that the biggest one I think there are a few actually in Ginza but this is the main one it's over five floors I think so let's just peep inside and then let's go to our next spot. the Uniqlo is actually 12 floors with a cafe and like a small resting area on top. I wouldn't recommend to go there unless you absolutely need to get your shopping done because there was a line for the escalator to go up like it's that busy. So now we're going to go to Ginza 6 which has a Lululemon which is why I'm always there but I really like about it is that it has a nice style branch like a bookstore branch and I really want to bring you guys there just to check it out and then yeah let's see what else we can get up to. If you're looking to shop for high-end brands, chances are it's going to be at Ginza 6. It is a very classy mall and yeah, like I said earlier, I only visit the Lululemon here and I just window shop at the Stayan. this Taya box is that it always has an exhibit going on and every time it's so distinct and different from one another so I really really like that. They don't have that big of a selection of English material but it's still nice to look around especially if you're into art and design and want to see Japanese magazines. I feel like it's more curated here. <music> stop for today is Katsumido camera and I recently discovered this thanks to my friend Nico he told me he bought a camera here once and when I went with him I really liked it and I think I'm regularly going to check this place out That's basically it for my Ginza guide. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I'll put all the links in the description box down below. I know I only went to one like eatery restaurant today, but trust me, the ones I wanted to go to were unfortunately closed. But don't worry, I'll include everything in the description box, so just check it out. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!